Hi everyone, my name is Justin Ashbrook. If you're finding me for the first time, I do DC videos like this. I do Marvel videos, I do Doctor Who videos. Sometimes I post music. Today I am joined by two special guests who will introduce themselves in just a moment. Uh, but first today we're gonna be looking at mental health themes in the animated film, Justice League versus the Fatal Five. Um, so you guys can introduce yourselves now. Not all at once. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Adilsa. Uh I'm a peer specialist and I work in the mental health field. Yeah. Hello, my name is Blythe Schulte. Um, I am a tactical consultant as well as multi-genre composer and uh, sometimes toy inventor. Great, so uh, before we get started, I just wanna say, please consider subscribing. We're uh, we're getting close to 500 subscribers, and that's going to be kind of our first uh, first goal. Okay, so so let's get started. So the two characters that we want to focus on, because they were the bulk of what was going on as far as mental health, are Jessica Cruz, the Green Lantern character, and Starboy. So first we'll talk about Jessica Cruz. So what did you guys observe about Jessica Cruz and the, her mental health portrayal? I thought it was very well done. It was accurate, at least for me. Um, her anxiety was captured to what I feel is anxiety, at least to my personal experience. Like I, I, I've noticed um, going outside the door, especially when I, was in intense moments of agoraphobia. It was challenging to leave my house. Mm -hmm. So Jessica captured that, like the challenges of coming outside your house, that anxiety you feel that you wake up and yeah, you wanna go out and yeah, you wanna meet your friends and yeah, you wanna do all of these things, but there's this, this thing that paralyzes you in your head and it was captured, I feel very well. It's still a struggle just to get out of bed. My brain's like a hamster wheel. I feel fuzzy, like I'm full of cotton and I, I can't breathe right. I get to the door and I imagine all these awful things that could be on the other side and I'm paralyzed. And also um, throughout the whole uh, throughout the whole movie, it was like a positive portrayal. It wasn't stigmatizing, you know. She was uplifting, and she was viewed by her friend as a human being. So at least to me, that's what I took it as. You know, like her friends were like, "Oh, you can do this." Yeah, you can come out of the house. You can be a superhero. You can be a part of us. So that was exciting to see because a lot of the times in, in the world, we see this stigma that's like, oh, if you're experiencing this, I'm not going to talk to you. You're quote, quote, weird. You're quote, quote, different, you know? And she's breaking that stigma. It's like, no, you can still have friends. You can still do things that you want to do and that you love to do. Um, and just to say the last thing, uh, my favorite part was towards the end where she storms out the door and she right. finally breaks free. First off, it was pure green, which is mental health, like the representation of mental health. And then she finally did it. She finally like made her move to, to go out there into the world. And I know for me, that was so meaningful because I know when I went back into the world, what we call quote, quote, recovery, that was vital for me to be a part of society again. So it was impactful. I feel like it was an accurate representation. I agree. I think it was a really beautiful story and her character arc was very, very well done. Um, whether or not the writers did that from their own personal experience or got very good first-hand sources from someone they know and love or just did good research, I'm not sure. But I think it was really effectively portrayed. 
And um, aside from green being one of my favorite colors, obviously, um, <laughs> I think my favorite things about her were that she really um, still was in this kind of moody or bluesy state. However, she had this sense of hope and it propelled her. It propelled everyone around her. And even when it was the dimmest light, it was still there. And I really love the symbolism of going into like the Green Lantern and then also that inner light of hers. Um, oops, I just used a Star Trek chord, inner light, anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I really loved her and I also found her to be really relatable. And I really appreciated that it was not stigmatized like other sources of media that just say, oh, if you're dealing with anything like this, you're crazy which is just not the right message. It's not true. We don't need more of that. So it was a really, really positive portrayal in my opinion too. Yeah, and I agree with that. And uh, one of the other things I liked were, well, we'll talk about Starboy later, but but her scenes with Starboy, there's a scene, it's probably my favorite scene in the movie where um, where they're they're sitting down and uh, Jessica's trying to, trying to uh, comfort him and she says, you can't just force your mind to do something it doesn't want to. Um, exactly. And I thought that was really powerful and it's a really good thing to like keep in mind. Like sometimes like when I'm trying to study but like something else is going on with anxiety or something like that, I have to like accept that I can't always uh, uh, do what I want to do because if my mind won't allow it, there's no point in trying. Then the fly, oh, they came for you. Ha had to stop them because Oh, it's so hard. I can't think. I can't remember. You can't just force your mind to do something it doesn't want to. I know. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like that was really powerful. And then I also liked how in the scene uh, where they, there's a scene where they have to go into Starboy's mind and they have to, uh, in order to figure out information about the Fatal Five who are the villains, and they can't just ask him because he, um, he's not he's not too coherent to the point that like he can't he can't just tell them. And then Batman says, "Oh, we, we need to bring her along because she's a calming influence." So like they, they all recognize that um, that she's like having an impact on him, and I thought that was really good. We need to know what he knows. He doesn't even know what he knows. Nothing he says ever makes sense. You'll have to take us inside his head. Us? You, me, and Jessica. Listen, two brains are company, three's a crowd, and four's a party I don't even want to go to. She's a calming influence. We need her. <laughs> yeah, I love that moment as well. I think it just, um, it really helps to see her as a real person. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's, it's really, um, I don't know if I want to say it makes me hopeful for more media to come out that's like this, um, but I, I guess, yeah. And I liked how um, throughout the whole movie too, um, Jessica is the closest to Star. And it's mm -hmm. that representation of someone else with a mental illness understands you better than someone without it. Like, they know the struggles, they know the darkness, and they also know the good parts of it um, that maybe someone else may not relate to. I thought that was that was really great too. <laughs> and uh, another thing I really liked was uh, was the therapist. So she goes to therapy and it's basically not working for her. Did you try using the mantra? Yeah not really working for me at all then you should create your own mantra one that works just for you how about i give up everything is terrifying and i'm not going to do this job um she wants medication um which i i, I think like the specific type of doctor that was couldn't give her medication um I, I think like like a psychiatrist can give you medication but a psychologist can't i think that's that's what it is um so i think the person she was seeing was a psychologist um, and so she, the therapist was trying to, or the psychologist was trying to give her uh, ideas for stuff she could do without medication. And one of them was the mantra and it wasn't working for her. So then the, ther the psychologist says, oh, find, um, you, you need to find your own mantra. And then later in the movie, 
Um, she actually does find her own mantra, which is the Green Lantern Oath, which is uh, it's a thing that's repeated a lot in uh, with, with Green Lantern characters. It's like blackest day, blackest night. I don't have the whole thing memorized. But then after that, seeing her success was, was really powerful. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's light! I, I would say the one thing with her character that I feel like uh, could have been done better was there weren't enough, I, I feel like there could have been some scenes that had her trying to use the ring, but it like not working. Oh yeah, that would have been interesting. Yeah, like she got it quite quickly. And one of the things that's um, specific to Green Lantern rings compared to other types of superpowers is that you need a lot of like willpower and focus to use it. Mm -hmm. So that's something that in theory should have been a struggle for her because of her anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead of that, we just get um, her one scene with her saying she can't use it and then Wonder Woman attacks her and then and then after that she seems to be able to do it fine so I feel like that that was the one thing that I feel like they could have handled better but I think still overall was good mm -hmm. uh, so uh, do you guys have any more to, anything more to say or should we move on to Starboy I think Starboy because there's a lot to say yeah. there <laughs> <laughs> There is a lot. <laughs> Where do we even begin? <laughs> Problematic? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think his character was one of the worst representation for mental health. That's how I feel. It, it, it did not do justice for people with psychosis. I mean, he's supposed to have schizophrenia from the little bit that I work, um, I read from the director, the writer, um, which it is captured because he talked about delusions and struggling to talk and these things, but it was so stigmatizing. Like he, he needs his medication to function. And if he doesn't get his medication, he's, um, angry and upset and frustrated and as a person who has psychosis like that is far from it <laughs> first off not everybody um has the same experience so that's first off but second off like there are some people who don't need medication some people do want to take the medication but no matter what um i feel like the cartoon made it seem like if he didn't have this medication, he was an evil person. It wasn't that he needed it for his well-being, but if he didn't drink it, he became this angry, nasty, horrible person. And I think that that gives into the stigma that people with psychosis are monsters and evil and scary and, and this thing to get as far away from them as possible. And then um, you can see that with the characters throughout the whole movie. Like all the other superheroes are like, oh, stay here, you know? And it's that, that stigma of, oh, you have psychosis. You can't be a superhero. You can't have a job. You can't have a career. You can't work. You can't go back to school. You know, and I heard, I personally have heard it throughout my whole life. So I feel like it was that stigma that, yeah. You know, you can't give into it. Um, I did like, however, how Jessica was like, no, it's sometimes like you can do it and you do belong and you are a human being. It almost gives us a glimpse because Star is in the future. Mm -hmm. So it almost gives us a glimpse like this is what the future should look like. It should be uplifting and friendly and humane and that you have friends and that you don't see a different in separation because you see his futuristic friends they accept him and they love him and he's equal but the older superheroes <laughs> which is like the stigma we've seen historically 
they're like, oh no, you can't function. But his future friends are like, yes, you can, and you're a superhero. You know, and then he he goes through this journey of having to prove his worth, of having to prove that he is capable of something. So yeah. Yeah. Um, not to defend like stigma or anything, but do you think do you guys think that the reason why they decided to have the other characters react that way towards him was to raise awareness about how that can really happen in real life? That's an excellent point. I think it could serve to do that because I feel like a lot of times when people witness behavior that they view personally as an outlier, um, their tendency is to like revolt or run away or be like, oh, that's so wrong instead yeah. of just trying to figure out what can I do to help that person or what, how does that person function differently than me? Um, so I think that might have been on purpose as well. Um, like just to, to show the point that you can either choose to uplift someone in general, like regardless of their mental health, um, or you can choose to push them down and the right choice is always to lift them up. Um, I think it could, they could have done a better job. <laughs> I, 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 that, that, <laughs> yeah. I feel like as we're walking through the film and we're discussing it, we can see that separation, mm -hmm. but it takes a discussion of the film. Yeah. I Actually, like yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> but when you first see the film, you're like, what the heck? Like, this is completely stigmatizing. <laughs> yeah. I think my initial reaction to it was... So I don't know if we're doing spoilers or no. I don't want to like. Yeah, we'll, we'll do spoilers. I'll, I'll add a spoiler warning and edit it in, in the beginning of the video. Yeah. Okay. So, so we can do spoilers. Cool. So this is a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I just, I have a lot of friends that are like so iffy about spoilers. They're like, yeah. don't tell me. And I'm like, okay. But anyway, um, I didn't really understand why like in the first scene that he was in, it just shows him like, I need my medication, I need my medication. And then I'm just kind of sitting here like as a viewer being confused. And I'm like, yeah. is he addicted to this medication? Does he need mm -hmm. it to function? Like, what's the deal with this? Why is he running around naked? Where do you think you're going? Um, that's not an accurate portrayal of everyone yeah. that, we met that has uh, a similar condition. Um, there was just, I thought it was a lot of questions for me at once yeah. when I first met his character. And then as yeah. it went through the movie, I saw like, okay, yeah, the, in his real time, he has a really good functional, um, if not outstanding life because he's a superhero. Yeah. Um, but it's just, um, I don't know. I, I, this is strange. I'm going to relate this to Star Trek because it's what yeah, I know. Probably, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like um, they portrayed now as our time, like in the dark ages, like of when we don't understand that every person is valuable regardless of the struggles that they have to go through because we all have them. It's just different ways for different people. Um, and like in the future, hopefully it's better because I know they, they mostly eliminated things like... Um, violent racism in Star Trek, that's just an example. Um, so they like, they, they throw it back to our times that are supposed to be right now or before as being like savage and like we didn't know how to treat each other. So that was definitely to prove a point and I'm wondering if they did a similar thing here intentionally or not. Um, definitely, I think they could have done a better job executing it, but. Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel like it wasn't clear if he was having withdrawal from the medication which some people can have extreme side effects. We know that from psychiatric medication or if he needed them. And if he needed them, it made no sense. Like I feel that was extreme, extreme. Like yeah. it's stigmatizing. That, that's how I felt. They could have done a better job. So, so, so you guys felt like if if it had been the case that he needed the medication, you don't think the reaction like the you don't think he would have been that extremely off based on like what a schizophrenia person would a schizophrenic person would uh, uh, like would be without their meds. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think um, there are cases that can end up naked. I've heard of them, or yeah. you know, like um, 
Amanda Bynes, she was setting up fires. We know that because of psychosis. So there can be those extreme yeah. cases, but that crisis is like one out of, I don't even know how many, like 300 or 400. Like yeah. it's not or like your ordinary cases on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Most people, they have crises that are escalating slowly. Yeah. And then it turns into voices and hallucination mm -hmm. to get to the point where Starboy gets to. It's like, it takes a lot of yeah. weeks or months, depending on, uh, on the case, right? Because yeah. some people have extreme crisis, some people don't, but I feel like it's not an accurate representation right. or at least they weren't clear of who Starboy is. Like, yeah. is he a person that's going to come in and out of crisis all the time? which doesn't make sense to the rest of the character because yeah. he's able to talk. He's able to have superpowers. He's able to connect with his friends. So obviously he's not having those extreme right. vices. It doesn't explain the rest of his character. I don't know. It's just, it's not clear what's happening in order yeah. for him to react that way where he would need the medication. Yeah, I agree. I think maybe I would suggest to them perhaps to do more of a buildup so that we can really see how much time has passed in order to get to that point. Mm -hmm. I just feel like also there's a lot of interesting contrasts at, um, with how accurate and realistic Jessica's character was and then Starboy um, because it almost doesn't seem like it would be by the same creators of the same film. So I'm just wondering like why the disparity is there. Yeah. Um, Maybe there's some articles out there that would tell you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's another thing I wanted to talk about is like, like, kind of not not that we have to like fully rewrite the movie, but like some basic elements of like 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 how the movie could have gone, like like examples of what they could have done to make it better instead of just saying like this is bad. So, um, so like you said, the build up, even if they did like if they did like a time jump or something. Like they wouldn't have to add. You could just say like three months later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been really effective, I think, yeah. and it, it works because of the comic format. Like they yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it, or giving a time a time um, reference or giving a little insight of who he mm -hmm. is, of what this illness looks like for him, particularly yeah. for him. Like yeah. if. if is he gonna go into crisis if he doesn't have a medication for a week? Mm -hmm. Or is he gonna go into a crisis if he doesn't have it for three months? Like, what does it look like for him instead yeah. of we're just thrown into this character and, yeah. they, and um, then stigmatizing. Yeah, they, they could have had flashbacks. I don't know if you consider a flashback because it, it's yeah. in the future, but like, like in his timeline back from that, like they could have had um they they could have like used that to explain um like like how his illness actually works like they did that for jessica they they had that like uh nightmare sequence where like her friends get they could have done that for him too yeah yeah i think there was a lack of insight into his character and that's a lot of what contributed to um the portrayal of him not being like up to par with jessica yeah and I wonder if they talked to someone with psychosis or yeah. if they just wanted to add another character yeah. so Jessica wouldn't feel alone. <laughs> yeah. And then they just read some books and based it off that, which may have been inaccurate. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I wonder what was the process to creating Jessica versus the process of creating Starboy. Because I, I agree, Blythe. I think it's completely different. Like, yeah. Jessica was so accurate to me, and Starboy was like, what happened? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you it's, do? <laughs> it's like when the cookie expands like too far out of the, the cookie shape and you can't tell what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird analogy, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Even in the psych ward, I think that scene was so stigmatizing. So stigmatizing. 
they made everyone in the hospital um, act aggressively. Like they're the enemies, they're evil, they're wicked, which is this stigma we hear from people with psychosis. They're monsters, oh. they don't know how to behave, they're erratic. You know, all of these misconceptions, they weren't human beings. We'll take them from here, Batman. You really have a knack for finding top shelf lunatics. But I, I feel like part of that was, if you're talking about like during the riot scene, like I feel like part of that mm -hmm. is because like most of those were like established Batman villains. So like, not not that like, uh, so it's, I don't think it's necessarily saying that, that most people who would be in an asylum would act that way it's just that like those happen to be the batman villains who who would who are like violent and stuff they're, they're like we know they're bad people because they're the batman villains so because why are the villains in the hospital? <laughs> right. Jessica is supposed to be the superhero. Yeah. And she wasn't in the hospital, but we know she has a mental illness. Yeah. So why is it that only the villains yeah. are in the hospital? It makes you think like you're putting again, this notion that wicked people are the ones who are in the psych ward, this evilness, this, this monster thing, mm -hmm. you know? Like Harley Quinn and like those other characters. Yes! <laughs> or the Joker. Yeah, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that, that that's like a problem with, more of a problem with like Batman lore in general than like just this movie, because cause it's pretty common for, like like you almost never see them in Batman villains, like in a real, like in regular jail. It's always, it's always Arkham Asylum. Uh, Cause that's like, that, that's just like the, the, the comment like that's just like the place that like the famous place basically um yeah where they go so uh one thing i want to be a main focus of my channel is taking things that worked in one piece of one piece of storytelling and applying it to other story uh other stories so what um so what what do you guys think the live action superhero movies could learn from this movie in terms of like uh, doing mental health stories. I'm thinking that's that's a really cool point yeah. to bring up. I think the one that I'm thinking of first for some reason is actually Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, and act actually, like, I don't know why, but I feel like they could put some sort of. I'm trying to actually formulate, but I, that like that was what came to mind first. I'm not really sure why. Um, if someone else wants to go first. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I, I mean I'm the one to keep. So obviously I'm thinking about it, but. They're doing a Green Lantern core. Oh, actually, that's not a movie. That's actually going to be a TV show. Um, so I'm not sure if they could do that. Uh, I'm not sure if that actually counts. But like, I feel like it would be cool to see. Uh, it would be cool to see like Jessica Cruz on that TV show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of any. Like, I okay. So I feel like if they make a Joker too, that that's one I feel like that that like could. Um, uh, that that like could benefit a lot from like an effective mental health story, because because mm -hmm. they they did in the first one. Um, I'm not like I haven't I've been totally like analyzing everything, so I'm not sure how accurate the portrayal is. But I feel like they they definitely like that that was like a big part of the first movie Joker movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree about Joker. We should definitely do a Joker review. Yeah, I've watched that movie. <laughs> I also just realized why I thought of Wonder Woman. So there's, this is another spoiler. Um, so there's this scene at the very beginning where Green Lantern is, well, as she's Jessica, she's trying to go outside and she actually yeah. meets it. And then she bumps into Wonder Woman. She's like, please don't bother me. Yeah. And she's the one that actually like gets her to activate. Um, and it's just really adorable and like a really wonderful friendship moment. So. I think it would be really cool to see some of their dynamic in some sort of live action, whether it's a TV show or film. Yeah. Um, just, it was really cute. This thing probably won't even work for me. Ah, Jesus!
Doesn't look like a mistake to me. You've got what it takes, Jessica. Yeah, they could have good chemistry. Um, and I feel like the, so the actress who voiced uh, Green Lantern, she's she's playing someone uh, named Crazy Jane on a different superhero show called um, called Doom Patrol. And I so I feel like, so, so she, she's already played like superheroes before. So I feel like I feel like like she'd be like good casting for the like if they did her in a live action bit, movie, yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other there's any other superhero movies that like have a lot of potential for mental health. Guardians of the Galaxy a little bit because they do a lot with like trauma and like like dealing with dealing with pain. That's like a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that movie. That would be interesting. Yeah. Um, th does anyone have any other like like topics that that uh, they want to bring up? Uh, for uh, the movie that we watched. Yeah, or or just just in general to like this discussion. <laughs> okay, so so I, I guess we can um, we can close down things here. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, and let let, let let us know in the comments uh, what piece of storytelling should we do for this series next, where we, we look at it through a uh, mental health lens. Yeah, so uh, thanks everyone for watching, and uh, I hope to see you guys next time. Stay shui. That's my, uh, that's my <laughs> outro.